all this week, 10 on your side is looking back at Hurricane Matthew tonight. How the storm devastated the Outer Banks. And Matthew caused widespread damage from rain and storm surge there. A year later, many have still not yet fully recovered. Our Brandy Cummings went to Hatteras Island, one of the hardest hit areas in Dare County. Brandy. Anita Tom, we could still see the lingering effects of Matthew on Hatteras Island. Thousands of properties damaged, $52 million in Dare County alone. Tonight, meet one family who moved back into their home just two months ago, but are nowhere near full recovery. You could hear the wind switch, and all of a sudden you knew it was coming. Howling wind, torrential downpours, a massive storm surge. Hurricane Matthew is a storm that won't soon be forgotten because of its uncertain path. By the time we got those predictions, uh, evacuations uh, couldn't take place any longer because we were already seeing the impacts of the storm. And its long lasting impacts. It was overwhelming. I, I didn't, it took me a while to even process what was going on. Inside the newly opened Dare County Emergency Operations Center, Emergency Management Director Drew Pearson showed us the storm's historic path. Hurricane Matthew was uh, the storm that uh, changed a lot. In addition to the damage to homes and businesses in the Outer Banks, 125 yards of NC-12 suffered overwash. 25 people reportedly died across North Carolina. And although the state requested more than $900 million in federal aid, it was only granted 1% of it. Pearson explained an inoperable emergency alert notification system in Dare County made communication difficult. If it had been, we probably could have done a better job of getting that changing information to the citizens that were going to be impacted. Kevin and Ashley Jackson showed us how water destroyed their home on Hatteras Island. This is no lake. Kevin took this video from his front porch. You know that we were going to have to start all over and not really knowing how we were going to do that was um, was difficult. Pictures taken after the water receded show the extent of the damage. Well, we lost all of our furniture. Um, so we lost all of our couches and chairs. Um, everything in the kitchen went. We lost um, most of our pots and pans and dishes, things like that. Thankfully, Ashley followed her gut to move the pictures and important documents ahead of the storm. That's all safe now, but photos only tell part of their story. The young family has been out of their home 10 months. Everything that we owned in the front yard. With the insurance payout, a grant, and a loan, it has already cost the Jacksons $190,000 to rebuild, a cost that may continue to add up because their home is still incomplete. We had. Um, uh, bad go around with the contractor and lost a lot of money. Since Matthew, the Jackson home has been lifted 12 and a half feet in the air, hopefully to prevent this from ever happening again. A similar move to many homes on their street. They got water and um, ended up redoing their house. There are many lessons to be learned from Matthew. Ashley told me if there's ever another storm headed her way, she'll leave again and I would make sure that I our insurance policies are I know exactly the details of them. I know who to call. I would make sure I've got those numbers on hand. But the most important message could apply to us all. Whether it's here in Dare County, uh, the Tidewater area or anywhere in our nation. Every hurricane season, our citizens and our visitors need to be ready, even if uh, the storm is forecast not to develop. Even if it's forecast not to develop, Ashley Jackson, the woman you met in our story, is not only a disaster survivor, she led recovery efforts in Frisco, helping others get back on their feet, even though her own home had been destroyed. Coming up tomorrow on Wavy News, we're taking a look at how businesses were impacted by Hurricane Matthew. I'm Brandi Cummings, 10 on your side. Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. There is a little something out into the tropics, and uh, it's not anywhere near our part of the world. I'm not terribly concerned by it either, because if it does approach the U.S. mainland, it would be through the Gulf of Mexico, come over to land, and then if it does get us, it would just get us with a little bit of rain. But even that is very, very far away, so it's speculation at this point. But I want to show you.